you never know what Mother Nature's grocery store is going to give you. And actually, this time of the year is pretty awesome for finding snapping turtles. I find a lot of them when I'm out trapping. And snapping turtle season lasts till November 30th here in Wisconsin. Water's nice and cold, it's pretty clean. But you usually find them just like this guy laid right up on shore here. There's only a few feet of water all sprawled out. They're pretty slow, so you can usually sneak right up on them. And if he makes the legal size limit, which is minimum of 12 inches, maximum of 16, we're going to take him home and eat him. I think he might be too big. That's a big old bugger. But in. All right guys, snapping turtle butchering time. So here we go, listen. If you're squeamish, probably don't watch this. If you are uh, one of the bunny hugging, Disney love educated, tree hugging dipshits, you know, leave your comments, I really appreciate it. I get paid for all of them, so thank you very much. But anyways, for the rest of you guys that really wanna know what we got going on and like to live life, we're gonna show you how to do a snapping turtle. There's a hundred different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you what I found to be the easiest. But first of all, I didn't quite tell exactly how Wisconsin measures the turtles, whatever. In Wisconsin, you can keep a snapping turtle from, I think, July 15th till November 30th, and it has to be between 12 and 16 inches across the shell. And it's just really easy to measure it. You just start right there, and you go right here. And there's a 16 inch mark, so you can see we are within the legal slot limit on this turtle. So it's really easy, so that's what you do. If they're too small, you gotta let them go. If they're too big, you gotta let them go. Next thing we gotta do here, the first thing we gotta do is whack his head off. So get yourself a good pliers. And this is always a, I wish there was an easy way of doing this. Uh, I've heard of axes and everything else, and it's just, you just gotta get a hold of them and you gotta fight and you gotta pull it out and you gotta whack his head off. And that's just a, that's just a simple fact of the way we do things here. So you get a hold of his head and then, Come on. And it's easy to grab the easiest to get the bottom jaw. And once you get that, believe me, he's been at this game a lot longer than we have and he'll be tough and you really gotta pull. And it's that. And then once he's out, you just get, use a sharp knife guys. Make this as easy on the turtle as you possibly can. Get his head out of here. We, go. we want to save as much meat as we possibly can. Like I said, I've seen guys do it with axes, and yeah, you can. And it's all great and dandy. But it just is what it is. We already got his juggler vein cut here. So, get right down here to the backbone. And listen, even though when you chop this head off, stay away from this thing, man. Because it will literally still bite you. Come on. There it is. So that's that. Here comes the blood. Here comes all the good stuff. Now, we're gonna take and hang him on a tree. It's as simple as that, by the tail. I've seen the, put the steak, or spike in them on the benches. I've seen guys do it on the table. I'm telling you guys, 
This is the way to go. Where's my hammer? Hanging on the tree. Hanging on the tree. If you just pick the right in the middle there, best you can. Get the nail started. And this is just his nerves. Don't everybody all, oh God, he ain't dead yet. Get him up here on the tree. That's it. Easy peasy, Japanese. Now, like I said, he'll still, hold on, we'll keep that, we do European mount. Another way to make some money with it. And when you hang them upside down, that's when they really start to bleed out. So, but we don't have to wait to get started. So really, here's what we want off the turtle. Hind quarters, front quarters, neck, tail and inside there is some tenderloins that's basically what we want all of this about seven different kinds or 14 different kinds of meat or all of that it's all crazy but anyways you can see right around here this is where we want to make our cuts and yes he's going to squirm around there ain't nothing you can do about it you gotta get that one side of here all right sorry go ahead so here it is, that's where we want to make our cuts. Do it any way you can. Just get in there and get it cut. No gloves necessary? No, I don't wear gloves. I guess if you're squeamish, you probably could. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen guys boil them, dip them, you know, you gotta have a big kettle, all of that. You end up skinning them anyways, because I don't give a shit who you are. You ain't chewing through this hide. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna skin him, but we're gonna get all this cut right around his shell. Get it cut as far back here as you can. You will struggle to get that. So then. Right here, we just want to take the middle and go right up through his old bunghole. And guys, listen. Kind of be careful of these. These some bitches are razor sharp and they will scratch you. So just be aware of that. So here we got this all cut. This is all cut all the way up the tail. We can do around the tail, but you can wait on that too. So you can go around or just leave it. I usually leave it. Now we gotta do his front here. And the same thing. Just follow the shell around. You almost can't screw it up. Mother Nature gives you a place to cut. Just like that. And listen guys, some guys keep their turtles in a tank and clean them out. I've done it. I've done it right away. This guy we let sit for a day and a half now, I think, only because I needed a camera guy. Otherwise, I'd have done him right away. My buddy Mike Loretson came up from Minnesota or down. It's down, ain't it? Yep. Diagonal. Mike grew up here with me his whole life, lucky enough. So here we go. We just go around the shell. Same thing here in the front. Just want to come around and meet your other cut. Just like that. Like I said, guys, it's pretty easy. Just like that. Same thing as on the tail. You want to come right down the middle. Just like that. All right, so there's the basic cuts all the way around. So we didn't get totally around here in the back. But that's okay, we'll get her done. Now, we might need another set of pliers because I don't think we've let go of this one yet. Oh, maybe. Now, some guys skin and pull the skin down and then cut the feet off. 
I just cut the feet off. You can see right here, you can kind of see where their, their pads are. That's right where you want to cut. So you can break them off. And there's nothing soft about skinning the turtle, I'll tell you that. And you can break it, you'll feel, see the joint right there. Once you break it backwards, then you can see the joint. And then just go right through it. And then you get to that other one. It's like double jointed, I don't know. You gotta give them a twist. And done. So take all four feet off. And like I said, be careful, their nails are sharp. You wouldn't think they are, but they're very, very sharp. Bend it back. And probably have to short well, I got my other knife here, so I'll be all right. <clears throat> I got a bunch in my truck. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we might need them. Have a sharpening stone, because this hide was hell on knives. Speaking of knives, those are pretty awesome knives. Right? These are made out of uh, long springs from a trap of mine. You know, one for like skinning beaver and mm -hmm. stuff and muskrats. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And dude, they hold an edge like forever. They're amazing. There's probably no better steel than them old long spring traps. And then you'll see why, like I said, you can make your choice up to do it before or after. And you'll see why once we get the skin in here. So that's that. Now comes the easy part and come across here too forgot this cut you gotta come right here that's all right we ain't professionals we don't make a million dollars doing tv so like i said come across here Save that meat. So every little bit counts on a turtle. It has to for the working ball, you think. You know? Right? I like to do them when I got like a well, limit in Wisconsin's three. But you know, three is a good number. If you can get three for you and three for the wife, clean six of them. Oh, yeah. And it's an all-day deal, and you get quite a bit. And how would you prepare it? I've had somebody make it for me before. Dude, the only way I... buried it in a cream of mushroom soup, and it, like, it killed the whole thing. Way too salty. The only way I really like them... I mean, I like them fried. I fried them and stuff. But how I really like it, and the way my kids really like it, is we just take... And we'll do a cooking video. It's Ooh. turtle stew. Nice. Get the vegetables and... Fr first fry the, fry the meat, brown it. And then put it in a crock pot, tenderize it, add some stewed tomatoes and all your vegetables and this part is slimy as heck to hold on to, but you gotta get it. It's just fat, like gelatinous fat and yellow fat and that ain't no good to eat whenever you see that on any of the meat 
get it off. Here's where we cut the feet off. Now it gives you a good place to, to grab and work back. And that's it. Like I said, none of this stuff is any good to eat. Anytime you see this yellow fat, you gotta get rid of it. Coyote bait. Coyote bait something. I never just I don't think I've ever used it for any kind of bait now that I think about it. It'll probably work. If you don't, you know, I guess if you don't have a players, you're really hurting for an outdoors guy. If you don't have a players, you can skin it all right from the start. Players just gives it a good starting point. The tail we will skin once we get it off. But like I said, if you hang them from the tree like this, they're just easier to deal with. They're not rolling around and kicking and all that crazy shit. Like, and I've, like I said, I've tried it every way. This is probably the most efficient way that I know of doing them. And it's still not like super fast. Such a mother skin and knife. That baby's getting dull. Season one. Not for shit. But I got a snapping turtle. I mean, I'll get out. I'm sure. How's yours going? You guys ain't seen nothing either. Eh? Your dad said it's like the first time in Lorette's in family history that nobody's really seen any deer. Yeah, really slow. I mean, like you and I were talking about earlier, it's pretty rare. I don't buy a tag here anymore since I do most of my hunting out west. Yep. Kind of pales in comparison. Just different style hunting and. Right. Oh, hey, I'm telling you, the, the hunting, what we grew up with, is done. Yeah. We don't sit in tree stands anymore. We don't get out there and do deer drives anymore. And I think, you know, that's what made it fun for kids. I mean, we all grew up doing that. We were kind of never bored during deer season. Mm -mm. Can you imagine some kid's dad today telling him, well, you're cold, get up and walk around through that swamp over there, and, you know, and they'd stay in the stand and... Shit, you'd kick a buck up to him or something. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I guess the last couple of years, I've totally just gone back to no more leasing land, no more doing all that. Just mm -hmm. go and sit in the deer, you know, sit in a bucket or I got a nice chair now. I'm getting too old to sit on a bucket. And I just enjoy my hunts more, mm -hmm. even if I don't see nothing. <clears throat> So that one so yeah it's totally totally different style and then like you said you go out west and oh my god we see tons of deer you get to get out and actually move around mm -hmm. and walk and it's not just deer it's antelope, antelope elk oh, yeah. moose bear dude when you seen your first moose did you were you like oh my god i can't believe how big that thing is i thought it was a statue i, I mean, dude it was a, <laughs> when i see my first one i i couldn't I, it's like i had to register that yeah. that was really a moose it was like are you shitting me mm -hmm. so no and that, so what do you think about the mentoring deal i just did a mentoring vi or uh the removing the age limit deal and holy christ got shared like crazy but people are just going nuts well, it just seems like they're trying to get more people out in the woods to enjoy. Well, I think times have changed. You know, we didn't have Xbox and all of that when mm -hmm. we grew up. Nope. So we uh, we kind of went out and did shit. Nowadays, I think there's a, a there's a lot of competition to being outdoors. So now we got it that far. Let's go to some of these turtles. You can cut them really easy right through here. And some are just a pain in the ass, I will give you that. This one looks like it's gonna be an easy one. Thin blade probably helps too. Yeah. Oh, nice. wow. and, and I've had some that were like, holy shit, you're never gonna get through them. Mm. This is 
kind of curves around and cuts through like a fingernail. Do you do anything with the shelf? Yeah, I sell them. People want them, I sell them. I mean, otherwise I got, you know, I got one in my house. I got a mounted turtle. He's badass. He was one that I got that had a, dude, he's just busted up shell, deformed, mangled. I was like, dude, this thing has just like been through hell. <laughs> so I, I had him mounted. He looks pretty cool. Is there a way to age a turtle? I don't know. I don't. I, I, dude, when you're growing up, they tell you to count the things on the shell. I think that's bullshit. I don't know. In, so many inches per year, probably. Yeah, and dude, I, I would have to say it probably has to deal with what they eat. So this comes off fairly easy. Oh, I didn't cut up through here, I guess. And then the old 18 different kinds of meat or 14 or seven or whatever. I don't know about that shit. Mm -hmm. What does it taste like? Tastes like turtle. So, okay. So now, I usually, let me go grab my bucket. Mm -hmm. I got a bucket in the truck. I usually just throw my quarters in. I just quarter it up here. The next part will be when we cook them up and debone them and all that. I just quarter them up right here. So again, just get as much meat as you can. Here's a front shoulder. All right, kind of brutal. Mm -hmm. But they have a shoulder blade. And all that, see that? They have a shoulder blade, they have all that. Right there was the joint. All this stuff when we go to butcher will all come off. We don't eat none of that yellow shit. Heart and his liver and all that. Did you ever try those? No. I'm not a big heart liver guy. Can't stand liver. I've eaten a lot of hearts. I still have yet to way to find a way to really cook a heart that's good. Have you got a way? Um, I've had it before, but it was prepared for. You know me. who makes the best heart that I know of? Harlan Rosine. Harlan Rosine. Yeah. I think they boil it first and then they pan fry it. Yeah, I don't know what they do. So, anyways. Now we'll get the hindquarters. This is uh, basically got the pelvis, just like a deer, and, or any animal, matter of fact. So you can go around it, or you can go through it. <laughs> you need to get yourself one of these. Hunter's Edge, I think, makes it. It works awesome on beaver, turtles, all that shit. This is the hardest part on a turtle is the back. Whether it be the, the pelvis. Oh, that's crap. There he goes. I think we got it now. It's just a lot of connective tissue up in here. It ain't like a deer you can get around it. Come on. There's one joint that we gotta get through. Oh, there it is. And that knife drop oh dropped right in there. How about that shit, huh? <laughs> and then I'll show you the flaming yawn of the turtle. 
All right, guys, I got the camera on the thing. Cannot stand that, sorry. Got the, What's that? I got the CG and the frame. It's the camera guy. Oh, that that works. Okay. We ain't getting it, like I said. We, we're just informing people. We ain't making a million dollars. This one should twist out of here. Now see, if you were trying to do that on a table, it'd just be a friggin' nightmare. There it is. We don't want none of that crap. All right, so now, now we got him. Now we got him. And they're actually fairly easy to gut. There's the lungs. And this stuff rolls down and you'll see They'll come down, there's his liver. And they'll come down past his neck. Just like that. Keep rolling. And that's that. So now, I'll take his neck out. This right here is like the, uh, the inside tenderloins of a deer. But there's not much of them here. But you can separate them. And we're probably the two best pieces of meat on the whole turtle. And then they got a, they got a spot where the neck is connected to the, to the shell. I guess there's that, there's the white meat. The white meat in the neck is freaking awesome. Oh, come on. It's like anything, they're trying to break its neck. There it popped. Neck, plenty of meat. Now, you can get some of this meat off, save that as much as you can. That goes in the meat bucket. Here's some meat here. Don't leave any meat, man. There ain't there's enough on them to worry about leaving a bunch. That one, and then oh crap! I'm gonna have to run to my truck again. I didn't. I don't think I brought my tin snips. That's okay. I can do it with this. All right, inside here is the the tenderloins, the back straps. So you can take a tin snips, but we don't have the tin snips here. Forgot them. So what we'll do, we'll just break them with this. However you got to do it, you got to break basically them rib bones. Both sides or just one? Both sides. I've never tried one side. Don't know. I've always just took a tin snips. I mean both sides of each side. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah.
Now we can just peel these back straps right out of there. These, I don't mix with the stew. I just fry this up. This is the only part of the turtle that I really fry. And then two little strips of meat. You get your finger right up underneath there once you get it started. And out they come. a little tenderloin. There ain't much to them, but it is what it is. Like I said, every little bit counts. I would say first time you do a turtle, you'll probably cut yourself. <laughs> probably the fourth time you do a turtle, you'll cut yourself. So you shot antelope doe this year? Yes. How many did you guys get all together? You guys usually limit out on them, don't you? Yeah. Um, you know, we started out probably in 2003 going out to Wyoming. And all of us were pretty macho guys always wanting to get buck tags. <laughs> so I was a little underwhelmed after I shot my first antelope goat buck. You know, I was like, well... Oh, not a lot of meat quite a bit of work goes into them and, <laughs> right you know, if you're not if you don't know what you're doing and we didn't and then i discovered that at that point in time like the, two years later uh we were at where were we like spearfish or somewhere at the walmart and i just decided to order a doe tag over the counter and my buddy goes well what are you doing that for and i said well it's 34 dollars com compared to almost 300. And Cut go, this back here. And he goes, well, uh, I'm going to get one too. So next thing you know, every year we're getting doe tags for antelope because you get more hunting in, more hunting with your buddies and mixing people up. You know, we got four guys and more bang for your buck that way. It was a lot of fun and we do really well. I have, uh, I've only eaten an antelope buck. I've never, and that's the only thing I've ever killed is an antelope buck. I never killed, you know, everybody's got to go out there first time, obviously, and kill a buck. Mm -hmm. So, how many guys go now? Usually a total of eight, but we're split up into two teams of four. That way everybody's got their own truck, their own quads, their own tents, heaters, food, blah, blah, blah. Do you camp at all together? Uh, this year we camped next to each other. Right. But if the other guys want to go somewhere else, go somewhere else. Plenty of public land to be had. So you can take that in and get the rest of that meat off of there, which I will. And now we'll skin the tail. You know, guys, you'll have guys that say antelope meat's terrible. I've never had the worst wild game taste in all my life. Oh, and you'll have guys, well, it's how you prepare it and how it's cleaned. And you'll have guys say that's the best meat, better mule deer, better, you know. I'll tell you what, the one I had, sagey as all could be, yeah. but it was a prairie goat. Yeah. The other guys that I've talked to, you get to, you know, you talk to the locals out there, they, they don't want to eat them. But I didn't, oh, man, we made fajitas out of it. It was freaking awesome. Yeah. Some of my best fajitas I've ever eaten in my life. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, when we made the roast, 
I don't know, man. I just, uh, if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't be a guy that would like to try different recipes, I guess I would have never ate it again. You got all the silver skin off? Yep. Because that's, yeah. that's where the true gaming is. Sitting. I did that. Hmm. Um, I, I do know I've talked to guys out there and they do say if you're going to eat them, don't mix up your meat when somebody else says keep the goats separate. Mm -hmm. Because they tend to. Once you get down so far on this tail, about where I drove that nail, doesn't make the going much further than that. You can see already the, the hide is just it's sticking right to the meat. So we'll just go right here. That's it. Tail done. So actually, now you know we got that much meat out. The time we debone it and everything, it'll be about a third of that. So I should have weighed him. He was probably well. He had to go close to forty pounds, wouldn't you think? I never lifted him. I would imagine he was a big fat bastard. <laughs> and I'll probably end up with eight pounds of meat, maybe less. So there's not a lot of meat on him, but it's friggin' awesome meat, and it's people just love it so that's it i mean it took us what half hour uh yeah exactly 35 35 minutes so you know i could have done him faster if he ain't bullshitting and all that so mm -hmm. 20 minutes it's worth it definitely worth it so next one you'll see we'll be back cooking it all right we got our turtle all quartered up and got them in uh here we're gonna take and uh just debone them is all we're going to do so here's what we do here's the i, I take and separate the white meat it does have a little bit of silver skin in there I got to get out but on the neck here you'll see it has some white meat we're gonna separate that out the white meat is the meat that I'll fry and eat and the rest of the meat is going to go into uh, stew when you got the quarters here this stuff the meat is okay to use it's but this this is that stuff that I told you about that fat that is no good. Any of this really slimy stuff that's with this fat, no good. So we get rid of all that. But man, all you gotta do is just grab your turtle and just start uh, taking the meat off the bone. It's just deboning it. It's nothing pretty. You see me when I was doing, it seems like you're hacking and whacking and that's really all you're doing. It's gonna be all stew meat. And uh, you know, you're just gonna take and cut it up in chunks for stew and uh, there's some of that stuff that we want to get rid of right there so that's it when we come back we'll be making some fried turtle and some stew I got to get the debone in this all right got our turtle we're gonna make turtle stew this is actually looks like it's complex but it's super simple we got to first brown our turtle so all we do is we take our turtle you can add your seasonings. I love this back 40 barbecue garlic and butter. I'm sure you can get the same thing at Cabela's. I get this at Fleet Farm. I just mix that in here with my meat chunks. Just like that. And then I use olive oil and just dump that in there. And grab a pepper towel and just brown it. The rest, pretty simple. Cause uh, this ain't, uh, Little house on the prairie, so we can go to the store and buy all the other stuff we need. Get that rolling here. So here it is. Crock pot. Take your turtle meat, put that in there. Done. You take, uh, I use diced tomatoes. Done. Sweet corn, but I leave the juice. I like the juice. It's nice and sweet. Peas. If you don't like any of this, just eliminate it. Carrots, I don't use the juice. Green beans, don't use the juice. Then I have carrots, or I mean I have potatoes, <laughs> green peppers, like that. Some more potatoes and onions. And yeah, this baby's gonna be full, but here's the deal. You don't have to make this big a batch, but my kids, they all love turtle stew. So they get some too. So there's that. Oh, falls out. That's okay. 
We'll do uh, some crushed tomatoes, or and it's more like a thick tomato sauce, just like that, and tomato juice. And we're going to add some more meat to this, and wow. that's going to be plum full. How and, are you going to add more meat? Huh? How are you going to add more meat? Oh, this will cook down. It won't be this full in, in a couple hours. Then I just cook it on high until uh, until it kind of cooks down, and I put it on warm and just let it simmer, and it's easy peasy. The hardest thing about turtle stew, really, is getting the turtles, and that's not too hard. Cleaning them is actually easy. It's it's kind of barbaric, but it's easy. Uh, chunking the meat up, easy. Going to the grocery store, easy. So there's there's really no excuse for somebody not to uh, do this. But anyway, so that's it. I do have some of the white meat here that I'm just going to fry up and eat. That's still a little frozen there, but anyways, like this. I'm just going to fry that, cut that up, fry that up, and uh, maybe make a sandwich or just pop it in and eat it and do whatever. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So we'll be back, show you the finished product, and then uh, hopefully you guys go out and enjoy what Mother Nature gives you because she gives you a lot of stuff. All right, we got our turtle soup, turtle stew. Some people call it stew, soup, I call it stew. It's got a lot more in it than just regular soup. But here we go, you can see, let me show you here how this just falls apart. You can see the meat just, just falls apart now. Hmm. Just like always. Hmm. Cold winter day. Oh, you know what it is? It is like kick the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I yeah, karate chop right in the nuts. Good. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you get out there and enjoy what Mother Nature's got for you. And I'm going to sit here and enjoy my turtle soup.